Hi, I'm Kip Kolsinskis. I'm a soil scientist and land use and conservation specialist for the Yukon Solid Ground Program. So today we're gonna to talk about soil tests and soil testing. Now there's a lot of different kinds of soil tests. So today we're gonna to concentrate on a soil test that you might take for sending in for nutrient analysis. And I would say one of the main things to do is to make sure that you have all your materials before you get started. So first I would say whatever lab you're using, Typically, they will be able to provide you some sampling procedures as far as the, the quantity of soil that you need to take and uh, whether or not it needs to be dried or you can just send it in, all of that kind of information. So again, check with whatever lab that you're using. And uh, the Yukon Soil Lab and the Connecticut Ag Experiment Station Soil Lab really have some really good fact sheets that I think are, are pretty clear on how to do a soil test. And the hardest thing about a soil test is doing the soil test. So a lot of people talk about doing a soil test, but then they don't do it. So why would we do a soil test? So first of all, of course, your plants are using nutrients. And if the plants are using nutrients, then typically you need to add more nutrients. So you're adding it through compost, you're adding it through fertilizer. So you need to know how much is in the soil and how much more you need to add for whatever your production goals are. So too much can be, uh, a bad thing, not only for plant health and soil health, but also it can end up having impacts on the environment. You could have a, an erosion event, so the sediment with the, the nutrients or, or pesticides could be running off, or they can leach into the groundwater. So we wanna use the right amount of nutrients, and it's also gonna save you money as well, not applying nutrients you don't need. So as I said, first check to see what you might need from the lab that you're using, and then I think it's always great to have a map. So a map for two reasons. One, I like to use a soil map from the Web Soil Survey because different soils have different properties, physical and chemical properties, and so the nutrients react differently with those soils. So to understand where you have soils that are majorly different, maybe one's wetter, um, maybe one's shallower, maybe one's sandier or gravelier, and so the nutrients may be used differently by the plants on those soils and what's residual versus how much you might need to add. So it's always great to check that because one of the things you're gonna do is areas where the soils are really different, you're going to sample separately. The other thing is depending on what you're growing. So if you have families of plants that you're growing together, um, that's a good place to sample. But if you have blueberries over here and you have vegetables over here, you're gonna to wanna to separate out those plots and sample them separately because you wanna tell whoever is doing the analysis what crops you're growing so they can give you the right recommendations. So I've certainly heard from the labs that, that uh, it's not uncommon for people to forget to put in the crop code or what crops that they're growing. So it's harder to give somebody a good recommendation. Um, the, the other thing is too, is that um, depending on the analysis that you want will depend on the amount of soil that you're gonna capture uh, for the sample. And we'll talk just a little bit more about that. The other reason that I like a map is that if I'm taking samples and six to 12 weeks later I get my results, well, where did I take that sample? So this way you have a map. After you do your sample, you can draw a dot, you can draw a description, you can put the number down, the code uh, of whatever you put on the sample, so you can relate it back to the field or the portion of the field where the sample was taken. So that way it's gonna be more meaningful uh, back when you start doing your crop planning for the year. So again, I like to have a map for both of those reasons. So what kind of tools do I need if I'm gonna do soil sampling? And it can be a variety of tools are useful. So some people may be familiar with um, this, which is a tube sampler. And a tube sampler works really well, gives you a nice little plug of soil. But if you have soils like a lot of Connecticut soils that have gravel or stones in them, it doesn't work worth a darn. So if you have silty clay soils that don't have stones and boulders in it, this is pretty pretty useful. And they use them a lot out in, uh, in the Midwest where they don't have that problem that we have. Now what I like to use 
is an auger like this, which is called the Dutch auger. And it's relatively easy to use. I'll give a little, a little demo here. You kind of stick it in an angle, give it a two turns, and pull it out and it gives you a nice sample. So you'd want to take a little bit of it off and gives you a nice sample. And so how much sample would you need? Well, as far as um, for most, most labs for nutrient analysis, probably if something like this, if this is gonna stay in uh, lawn or it's gonna stay in pasture, you probably need to only go down to about, about four inches or so. But if I'm doing something like vegetable crops, I want that whole topsoil layer. So more like six to eight inches, you're going to take that sample. And then if I'm doing a perennial crop of some sort, like grapes, fruit trees, I'm probably gonna to wanna to go as deep as a foot. And then I'm just gonna take it and knock it down into my bucket, my nice clean plastic bucket. I don't really recommend a metal bucket because you don't, there could be metal flakes that would come off that could impact that. So, and though if you don't have a trusty auger like this, what might be more common is that you probably have a shovel. So you certainly can use a shovel. And what I would do is dig a, dig a small hole, a slice on the edge of the hole here, with my, my spade, and I like a tiling spade like this because it has a narrow blade, and you don't want all of this debris at the top here. So you take out big stones, you take out twigs, you take out you know any big root masses like this. So I would take these soil material, add that into my bucket, and if you don't have a, a, a tiling spade or a shovel, Probably every gardener has a, you know, a, a, a soil knife or a trowel like this, and you can certainly do the same thing. So you've you've dug your hole, and you're just going to take a get a thin a thin sample here, something like that. Dump it into your bucket. The other reason that it's nice to have a trowel is because the other thing is you're going to take your samples and you're going to aggregate them and you're gonna mix them and homogenize them. So you're gonna take it, break up the big chunks, take out any leaves, roots, stuff like that. Mix it all together. So you might ask, well, how many samples do I take? So it's a combination of the area that you're working in and um, kind of your layout of your different fields and your different crops. It's not recommended that you use one sample for any area that's larger than about 10 or 15 acres. You really, really should break it up more than that. So for an area like this, that's maybe about a, a half acre, the soils are very similar right here. Um, I probably would take about 15 to 20 samples. So I would be doing random samples all around through here. Soils are very similar. I'm gonna take my samples, mix them up in here. As I said, chop it up, break it up. And you also wanna avoid areas that are really different. So someplace where, well, I know that the compost gets stored there. So don't take a sample there, or this area is disturbed because there was a building. Don't take your sample there. Take your samples where your production areas are and where the soil is not particularly uh, disturbed by something that may impact the, the chemistry of the, of the soils. So, I have my clean plastic baggie. I've got my permanent marker. So I'm gonna label it. Soil sample one. And I'm gonna note where I've taken it on my soil map or my field map. And then again, it's really handy 
is I've got this trial here. I'm just going to take my sample. And again, look at uh, the recommendation from the lab of how much soil that you need. But for example, the Yukon soil testing lab, for regular nutrient analysis lab results, you only need about a cup of soil. So we're not talking about, you know, huge volumes shipping 20 pound bags of, of soil for your soil test. So it's relatively, relatively small amount. And if you're doing um, some, some extra categories of, of samples, like you want organic matter sampled or um, the texture, you might need two cups rather than a cup. So it's just a cup or two of soil is plenty. And in some cases, even if it's a little, if it's sopping wet, you probably need to let it dry out a little bit. But if it's moist, that's fine. And just, as I said, close it up and uh, make sure you have your label, write down your, your label of where you took it. And um, either you can send it into the soil testing lab or for the Yukon and Connecticut Ag Experiment Station, both places you can drop them off at various locations, but check and, and make sure uh, of what the protocol is. Depending on what lab you're sending it to, say it's six to 12 weeks, you'll get some results. A lot of times there'll be information in there about how to interpret the results. And, and typically you'll have a way to ask for it in either pounds per acre or square feet, something like that. But in some cases, you may need some assistance in understanding how to use that information. So the lab that you're sending it to, they may have somebody on call that can help interpret the results. I know that the Connecticut Ag Experiment Station and the Yukon Soil Lab um, have folks that can help. And of course, the, the solid ground team and the Yukon Extension team can also help you with interpreting those results. So a couple other questions that I typically get is, well, when can I sample soils? What's the best time of year? A lot of people typically think about it in the spring as you get close to the growing season. I would say the only problem with that is that's when the labs are typically at their busiest. So as far as the turnaround time, I would say as long as the ground is not frozen, you can sample the soils. So here we are in, um, December and the ground's not frozen. So that's why we're doing a sampling today. And that's, that's just fine. So I have no problem with that. And then the other um, comment that we get is how often should we do a soil test? So I would say if you're changing the major crops that you're growing, you're, you're going from vegetables to, you know, perennials, something like that, that would be a good reason to do another soil test because the recommendations are going to be different and being able to understand the recommendations. And then the other thing is I would say probably every two to three years is adequate. Um, you don't need to do a soil test every year. And again, once you start understanding the results that there are some nutrients that you're going to have to add every year anyways. And then the other thing is too, I think it's always helpful as far as the form, filling out the form and supplying additional information that they may ask for is that if you are able, to, if you've been adding compost or adding manure to try to estimate how much of that, I think that will improve your results as well. So what I'm hoping is that if you haven't been doing a soil test, that you'll start off getting a soil test that will serve as a baseline into the future for how, to, how many nutrients to add, um, how many nutrients the plants are using. And you can also, during the growing season, uh, partway through the growing season, you can send in a sample for analysis as well, and that could also help you. And there's also services for plant tissue testing, which also may be helpful. And um, I'm just covering soil testing today, but I know that the Yukon soil testing lab also does plant tissue testing as well. So that you're getting a good idea of how the plants are using the nutrients that you're adding. But again, you're getting a baseline every couple of years, you're going to be getting a soil test and applying to the, to the soil test. And it will save you money, you'll have better plant health, better soil health, and uh, less potential for environmental impact off-site. So good luck with your soil sampling. Take care.